Hello, my name is Kyle Borgett. Welcome to the IECM OxyFuel tutorial. For this video, we assume that you are familiar with the basic functionality of the program and also how to set up a traditional pulverized coal power plant. This video is a part of the carbon capture and sequestration tutorial series, and its intent is to familiarize you with the model screens that relate specifically to analyzing an oxyfuel or oxycombustion power plant. Let's begin by starting a new session and naming it oxyfuel. We want to begin configuring our plant by selecting oxyfuel as our method of CO2 capture, but this selection is currently grayed out. This means that there are some other design choice which must be made or eliminated in order to have this option available. In this case, it's the absence of a particulate collector that's preventing the oxyfuel option from being chosen, since all of the current oxyfuel combustion designs currently require fly ash collection. So if we select, for example, an electrostatic precipitator, we find that oxyfuel combustion is no longer grayed out and may now be selected as our method of CO2 capture. If we were interested in using a high sulfur coal, we would need to pair our precipitator with a wet FGD unit for sulfur removal. In this example, however, we are going to use Powder River Basin, a low sulfur subbituminous coal. So instead of an ESP and wet FGD, I'm going to select a lime spray dryer for SO2 control and a fabric filter bag house for particulate collection, which is a common design for low sulfur coal plants. For NOx control, you'll find that the option of an SCR system is now grayed out. Since most current designs don't include one, this is not an option currently available in the IACM. For this example, we will assume that in-furnace NOx controls will be sufficient to meet emission requirements, but that we will need carbon injection to either curtail our mercury releases or to prevent embrittlement of the aluminum heat exchangers in the carbon purification unit. Lastly, let's add a wet cooling tower to comply with typical water pollution control requirements. You may have noticed that when the wet cooling tower was added, the configuration menu at the top changed from user defined to typical oxyfuel. This is a shortcut you should find handy, but don't forget to set your fuel specifications when we go next to set parameters. Under set parameters, I'm going to accept all of the IACM defaults in order to save time, except for the coal type, which I want to select as Wyoming Powder River Basin. In future versions of the IACM, the coal choice will automatically be linked to certain plant configurations, such as oxyfuel. Under the overall plant tab, the bottom tab called constraints is generally where we set overall emission constraints for regulated air pollutants, as you may have seen in other videos. However, for the case of oxycombustion, we don't have an option for low levels of overall removal, say on the order of 50%, which might apply to post-combustion plant designs where only a portion of the flue gas has to be treated. So for the oxyfuel systems, this constraint is overridden by the process level design that we'll look at shortly. Moving now to the CO2 capture tab, we can see that the important parameters for the air separation unit, or ASU, are displayed because the process type drop-down menu here near the bottom of the screen is currently set to air separation. The default oxygen purity level is 95% oxygen by volume a value which has become the standard in both industry reports and academic literature. For this example, we will leave the oxygen composition at the default value, along with the final oxygen pressure, which defaults to one atmosphere. The IECM calculates the number of ASU trains required based upon the required oxygen flow rate and the physical size limitations of current ASUs. If your plant design requires a backup unit called a spare train, it can be added here as well. 
the unit ASU power requirement and total ASU power requirements are both calculated automatically using default ASU performance metrics. But if, for example, your ASU is more efficient, requiring only, say, 190 kilowatt hours per ton of oxygen, then you need only to deselect the calc button and enter a new unit power requirement. If we now change the process type to FG Recycle and Purification and then select the Lower Performance tab, we can see the default performance parameters for both the Flue Gas Recycle System and the Flue Gas Purification Unit. Under the Recycle stream, the percentage of flue gas recycled back to the boiler to moderate combustion temperatures is set at a default value of 70%. For this example, we will assume that this value is a few percentage points lower, say 67%. Under the purification unit, you can choose to remove the unit entirely if you want the model to capture the entire flue gas stream. For this example, however, we will keep the purification unit and also keep the default CO2 capture efficiency of 90%. As discussed in the IACM documentation, the default purification technology is a cryogenic separation unit, which uses a combination of knockout drums and or distillation columns to achieve the desired level of effluent removal from the carbon dioxide stream. If we were going to be using the captured CO2 for enhanced oil recovery, we would probably want to have a higher purity of, say, 99.5%. However, for storage in a deep saline formation, the default purity of 97.5% will be sufficient. The last two lines give the unit and total purification energy requirement. These parameters can be changed if desired or if other process information is available to you. At this point, we have finished configuring our oxyfuel plant and can view plant performance metrics by selecting the Get Results tab. <coughs> selecting the CO2 Capture tab presents us with a diagram of the air separation unit as it is currently the selected process type. This diagram provides us with basic information regarding the mass flow rates associated with the ASU as well as the temperature of the oxygen stream. The lower gas flow tab presents a more detailed breakdown of the mass flows for individual streams in the ASU. Selecting the lower capital cost tab provides a breakdown of the ASU plant costs as well as a total capital requirement for the oxygen plant. The O&M tab reports fixed and variable costs for the ASU, total costs including the impact of the ASU on the total plant costs are found under the rightmost bottom tab. Changing the process type to FG Recycle and Purification and then selecting the Diagram bottom tab presents us with a simplified process flow diagram of our separation system. More detailed mass flow information is available under the DCC Gas and Purification Gas bottom tabs. Similarly, Capital, O&M, and Total Cost bottom tabs provide analogous information to that presented previously in the ASU example. Lastly, the summary bottom tab provides a summary of our configured plant's performance and costs. This concludes this brief tutorial on oxyfuel plant designs using the IECM. Thanks for watching.